welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint a beautiful Easter hare. So let's get started. And here I have a painting of a hare that I did some time ago, which I've just done a quick uh, photocopy of. And I'm going to use that basis for this painting. And here are the colors that I'm going to use. That's black, burnt sienna, um, Van Dyke brown or sepia, and quinacridone gold or you could use any other yellow really. And I'm going to use the black and the quinacridone to mix up the subtle greens that I've got there. Um, the burnt sienna will be the inside of his ears and the other browns and um, blacks will form the rest of the colors of his fur. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my hair and I'm going to show you a method I use when I want to work really quickly. Um, and that you can use if you download one of my um, tracings from the website. I have printed out a black and white copy of the painting that I'm going to um, reproduce and I've taken a very soft graphite pencil and I'm just going over the back of the um, painting there, turning it into a kind of carbon paper. You don't want to use carbon paper because that would spoil the painting but graphite doesn't matter and it'll just give you the impression as you draw over it with a sharp pencil, which I'm going to do now. I've got my uh, Stettler here and I'm just going to go around the outline edges of the uh, painting to give myself a guide for the drawing. This doesn't take very long, you just need to literally trace over the lines, pressing fairly hard so that it does come through onto the other side. And this speeds things up enormously. If you want to do the same painting more than once, there's nothing wrong with um, saving time on the drawing by doing this. Um, and in fact, if you're learning to paint, this is really beneficial for you because it means you can spend more time painting and less time drawing. Not everybody wants to be able to draw and drawing is an art in itself, of course. So um, if you don't feel up to that and you just want something to color in, you don't have to resort to a coloring in book or painting by numbers. All you need to do is download from the internet a painting, print it out on your printer, and then go through this very quick process. And you'll have a satisfying image of something that looks realistic for you, and you, then you can play around to your heart's content, um, doing it more than once as you, as you need to, to get it right. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's a really good way of learning to paint. Very, very helpful. It's not cheating. Now you probably can't really see that very clearly because of the filming, but I can see it perfectly well and now I'm just going to go over it so that when I'm doing the actual painting um, I can see at where I need to, to go. And of course I don't believe in staying inside the lines completely, so sometimes I will actually ignore my guidelines and, and go outside of them. But for this one I think I'm going to pretty much stick to the to the same painting that I did before because I quite like the colours in that painting, I quite like the way it looks and I thought it would be quite appropriate for this time of the year. A lot of people, um, I think in Germany the hare is the symbol of Easter rather more than it is in England. In England we talk about bunny rabbits rather more than hares, although of course the people who um, follow one of the pagan religions like Druids or Wiccans and so on are quite uh, closely connected with the, the hair as a symbol of rebirth and, um, and so on. So that's uh, something for everyone here. And so I'm just sketching in some of the grasses that uh, are in front of the, the hair there and a few in the background. And in just a second we'll be able to get started with the painting. I'm just going to use an ordinary round nylon brush, synthetic, uh, about size 10, I think this one is, and I'm wetting the ears. I'm using a piece of paper here which um, is, uh, I'm not sure what it is, and but it's 140 pound watercolor paper, and I think this is going to be um, a little bit problematic. I'm not really liking the surface here, but I. I thought I would give it a try and then you can see what happens when you paint on, on different paper. Now 
Now that um, that black is is bleeding very very uh, oddly, and I'm immediately seeing that I'm not going to have problem controlling this paint. It is absolutely true that if you're trying to do a loose watercolor painting, the paper is very important. What happened to me is I, I inherited a, a large amount of watercolor paper from somebody who I used to know, a painter who actually died and left me all of his um, paper. And the thing is, some of it's quite old. And if it's very old, sometimes it loses its sizing. And if it loses its sizing, it doesn't react properly with paint. And some of it, I don't know what it is because it wasn't labeled and it's not watermarked. It's not in any kind of packaging. So I'm having to just, uh, I'm trying to work my way through it. It seems a shame to waste it just because I don't know what it's called, but it does mean that sometimes I have a, a bit of a problem coping with the, uh, the quirks and foibles of the, of the paper. And so we'll see how this one goes. I'm just basically laying in a, an underwash here with the, um, the brown and the black, as you can see. I'm putting in quite a, a heavy kind of black shadow there on the top of the head and uh, I may have to lift some of that away and spread it out a bit like that because it's um, obviously too dark. When I'm painting anything I, I try to not work only in one area of the painting but to, to do strokes over the whole area because otherwise one part of the painting will become overdeveloped and then you can't really see the thing as a whole so I've gone down to the chest of the hair and put a few strokes of dark in there to try to give myself a better balance of what's going on. I'm not feeling particularly confident about this painting at the moment and I might very well have to start all over again but sometimes it's a good thing you know you could call it a warm-up and if you know full well when you start it it's not going to work then you can kid yourself and say oh I didn't mean it to work anyway so I'll just go ahead and, and call it a warm-up this is just a trial nothing wrong with that is there so I left my first um, wash to dry and when I came back to it I decided that it was going to be good enough to carry on with so the first thing I'm going to do now at this point is to start putting in his eye. So I've got my number one tiny brush and some black and I'm just going to paint in the pupil of the eye and the, and the brown part of his eye. And now I'm coming in to uh, just draw in his nose and his mouth. And he starts to look a little bit like a hare. I've picked up some um, burnt sienna and I'm darkening the insides of the ears with a little bit of, uh, of the lovely rusty brown that uh, burnt sienna makes. And, uh, and now I'm going to emphasize some of the shadows on the darker part of his head, the darker side of his ears and his forehead. I'm just pulling the paint down into the face there. And now some, some this is a Van Dyke brown or burnt umber would be fine as well. And just there, um, putting his fur coat in really. Now I'm just wetting this area loosely because I'm going to drop in some, some light colour down there. And then just dragging down into his muzzle the brown. Hairs often have very dark tips to their ears, which is quite characteristic, so I'm trying to get that effect.
Now for the background and the grasses around the hair, I always tend to start these days with my toothbrush and I'm just mixing up some black and some canacridone gold and I'm just spraying that in in random way around the hair. And then I'm going to come in with my mop brush, this is a Japanese squirrel brush, and just soften that up to give a kind of effect of some nice soft grasses there. Um, that works quite well. This brush has seen better days, but it works very well for this kind of thing. And then I'm going to use my um, sword liner, um, which is uh, very long um, hairs on this brush, very flicky. Um, and you can make some very interesting effects with that. So I'm just picking up some black and then just dashing in with some calligraphic lines there to give the effect of grasses. And to be quite honest, um, at this point you could probably leave this painting and call it done. It doesn't absolutely have to be worked up any further than that and that's why I've done these grasses at this stage so that you can see that you don't need to go any further unless you want to. And I'm going to work on it a little bit more to take it to a slightly more finished uh, level but it's definitely not necessary and you know the most difficult thing about painting in watercolour is knowing when to stop. A lot of people say that and I think it uh, never was a truer word said. Many paintings have been ruined by overworking, very many. Um, Anyway, so it's quite fun this bit. I think you'll enjoy that if you give it a try. Just any kind of old toothbrush to spatter the paint on. You don't need any expensive equipment to get these interesting effects in your paintings. You don't have to buy special chemicals and things. Just use an old toothbrush, some of the paint you already have, and a little bit of ingenuity. Um, coming in with my uh, felt tip pen here to just darken up the eye and the nose and the mouth because they tend to get a little bit lost after you've been painting over the top of them for a while. And I always feel that a few um, lines, uh, I suppose it turns it into a little bit of a line and wash type of painting. I always feel that gives it a bit more energy. Um, but one of my favourite tools is my black um, Norris Charisma watercolour pencil, which I love because when this pencil hits water or wet paper, it just explodes into black, which is super excellent effect, and I really like using it. Occasionally I make a mistake, um, and that's pretty difficult to fix. There's a mistake right there, um, but it's worth it because the end effect can be quite dramatic and it's fun. I'm the kind of painter that likes to use, I suppose I'm probably more of a multimedia painter rather than just a pure watercolourist because I do like to use other things and sometimes I use pastels as well and I have been known to use gouache. In fact I was thinking that that would be a nice thing to do, do a gouache demonstration at some point. Um, but I'm not the kind of painter that likes um, gizmos. I, I like to use the traditional methods and the traditional materials. I'm just giving him a bit of a hairdryer now to see where I'm up to and then once he's dry we can go for the next step. Now again at this point you could call him done but I'm thinking he looks a little bit cold and since the spring is coming we're going to warm him up a little bit so I'm going to pick up a little bit more burnt umber and sorry not burnt umber burnt sienna and come in with that and uh, liven up his uh, fur coat a little bit with some with a warm brown. The Van Dyke brown that I've used is is very nice but it is a cold cold brown and uh, yeah anyway so that's what I decided to do right or wrong and so that's there we are and uh, just adjusting that so that hopefully when it's dry it will work. So 
so here's the final painting. Um, I quite like the way he turned out. I hope you enjoyed watching me create this hair for Easter. If you want to download the sketch, please go to dianenton.com and that's my website where you'll find this and about 20 other paintings that you can download the sketches for. So that's it for this evening and I'll say bye-bye for now. Bye-bye and hope to see you again here soon. Bye everybody, bye-bye. <laughs>